So, in order to refresh your memory about what we learned last week, I'm going to you know, call one of your name once again you know, to address you know, what you learned about the, you know, the history of the calculus. So I brought your group paper so you can you know, take a look at if you want, you know, after looking at you can address you know, your group's approach uh, to the problem. So anyway, so if, you, if your group presented your you know, point of view, you don't have to come to front to address the, you know, your group point of view. So let me check just one more group. Do you think Did you present it last week, your group? Ah, come here. Here, one one one, I'm pushing. Group, da ka jo apko de met jo. Pushigo, da shi apal te.
Let's take a look at one more group then. So, Imino. Another Henry. Hogan, you just said. Yes, sir. Junior, you just said. Ah, Junior, you just said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 국민이 교생 같죠. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 어떻게 다 했어? 다섯 전화 했는데. 지혜 줘했어? <웃음> 결국 걸렸구나. 그래서 나 지혜 줘가 찾아볼까? 연 찾아볼래? 안녕하세요. 저는 1, 2학번 이모님들이라고 합니다. 어, 저희 조는 저번에 토론할 때좀 일본의 치중을 많이 했었어요. 그래서 근데 일본 내용은 다들 너무 똑같은 것 같아서 넘어가고 이번하고 한 번은 사실 많이 토론을 못했는데 저희는 이번은 방금 병수 선배님의 조가 발표한 것과 반대로 저희는 어, 이 등사가 생각한 대로 지금 이 작품 기본 정리가 그러니까 리만 학으로 정리된 게더 적합하다고 봤는데 그 이유를 만약에 지금 한이 1820년대 그러니까 20대 초반처럼 설명을 하면 정석분의 정의로 이 작품의 기본 정리를 다시 그러니까 이 라크로이스 정의로 현재 리만성을 찾아갈 때 약간 학생들이 받아들이기 상대적으로 더 어렵지 않을까라는 생각을 했기 때문에 반대로 리만성으로 정의를 하면 그 그러니까 어, 라크로이스식 정의를 찾아가기에 더 쉽다고 생각을 해서 학생들에게 이해를 하는 면에서 그게 더 편하다고 생각을 했고 그 리만성으로 정의하는 게좀더 엄밀하게 정의된 거라는 얘기가 나왔어요. 그래서 저희는 어, 이 교사 의견을 찬성하는 의견이었습니다. 그리고 3번에 대해서 보면 어, 저희는 3번에서 음, 딱히 다른 분들과 다른 의견이 없어요. 그냥 저희 는 그냥 위에서 미적, 미군과 적군 관계의 역사적 변화를 어떻게 설명한다고 했을 때 그냥 위에서 수학이 절대적 지식이 아니라 새로운 네, 추가되면서 발달하는 것보다는 누적적으로 발달하지 않는다는 것 정도까지 생각을 하고 그때 시간이 끝나서 그 뒤에 교육적으로 어떤 의미가 있는지에 대해서는 많이 생각하지 못했습니다. 오늘 발표는 여기까지 할게요. 네, thank you for your you know, presentation about your opinion, uh, how to interpret uh, you know, the history of calculus. Uh, I'm going to briefly uh, summarize you know, what you have done uh, about you know, storytelling and creativity. And then I'm going to uh, address uh, some more issue you may think of. You know, You can remember, you know, what I'm trying to do in this class, you know, two different type of, you know, using, you know, history of mathematics, right? One type is, uh, is to use basically video clip, right? By using just, you know, the fact of history, right? Another issue last week we have used, right? Based on, you know, the uh, debate format, right? 
I just uh, read you know, history, of, you know, history of math, and then I developed you know, different kind of question. But uh, you know, as you can see, you know, uh, this is exactly what I wanted. You, know. you just uh, saw two different types of opinion right, about the same question. Right? And then you can think of, you know, even if you know, they, are different, you know, they, they are having a different point of view, we need to you know, respect each other, you know, what kind of advantage, right, in selecting one opinion, right? What about the you know, disadvantage, right? As you can see, Ji He and, uh, what's your name? I forgot. Uh, Byung Su, right. Uh, Byung Su and Ji He are uh, two different uh, points of view. So you need to think about, you know, uh, at these points, uh, how can you handle, you know, how can we use you know, advantages as well as you know, disadvantages of using you know, history of math. So one of the issues I'm going to address one more thing you need to think about, you know, think about you know, the genesis of knowledge and the individual must follow the same course as the genesis of knowledge in the race. Basically, you know, student learning need to follow the same order of the knowledge which has been developed in the history of math. Definitely, you know, that's the topic, right? We discussed last time, right? I just to show you the order of, you know, history. And then, what about this order? What about that order? How can you uh, reorganize, you know, those, you know, you know, sequences, right, in the history of math? Definitely another issue is the sequence of learning should be geared to the interest and need of students because their motivation is of great importance. Right? Uh, this is you know, two different point of view. One view, we need to respect you know, history of math in terms of you know, sequences and order. However, what about the you know, student need? Right? Still need to understand mathematical concept. We do have two different points of view. One view, you know, from math, math, mathematic point of view, right? Mathematic itself is more important. We need to follow, you know, those sequences, right? Respect it. But the other view, we need to respect, right? Student point of view because students need to learn, right? Students are subject, right? In teaching and learning mathematics. Therefore, we need to respect our students. What is the best way? Probably, you know, the most accessible, right? Probably content sequence accessible to students. That's going to be probably the best way from the student point of view. Therefore, <coughs> one of the issues in using history of math, you need to think about how to combine subject matter aim of instruction with the socialization of the student. Do you understand what I mean? So we need to respect both of them simultaneously. But as a teacher, as a math educator, how to construct right, mathematical content on the basis of both of them simultaneously. Make sense to you? Any questions? I just addressed you know, two different methods, how to use you know, history math, right? And then I just want to try to connect you know, those two different approach with combination of subject matter aim of instruction and the socialization of the student. No more question about history of math? And I think about you know the issue I'm you know addressing, you know, so uh, uh, these two points, you know, were often, you know, 
pointed out, you know, by many math educators, you know, how uh, do we need to handle, you know, this issue, you know, in in the balance between two of them. <coughs> we also <coughs> last week, uh, Dr. Kim um, addressed, you know, his research area uh, based on. PDE, partial differential equation. I hope, you know, I really hope you learned uh, something uh, from the lecture. Even if, you know, the lecture is kind of difficult because, you know, usually mathematicians, you know, <laughs> you know, talk or lecture is kind of difficult because, you know, it, it's, you know, too advanced math and then too much content is going to cover in their lectures. But I expect it, but uh, uh, at least you can learn something, right? How to model a real life context, right? Or real life problem by using mathematics, right? How to simplify, right? Or uh, those kind of issue by using mathematics. <clears throat> Have you ever heard the word steam? STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Mathematics. Uh, this is the you know, initial of the, you know, the five word. It is called you know, STEAM. The main reason nowadays, you know, the Ministry of Education emphasizing the word STEAM, basically In education, we only use contextual real life example and motivation emerging from STE. In other words, you know, science, technology, engineering, and art makes mathematics more accessible and easier and more flexible you know, to students. That's why we are considering you know, STEAM, the word STEAM. We want to basically connect mathematics to you know, the other fields, such as science, technology, engineering, and arts. <clears throat> Obviously, there are many advantages of interconnection between mathematics and ST. You know, so each one of mathematics can be applied to other fields, right? But those other fields, you know, real life problem usually in science, you know, technology, engineering, and arts. Think about, you know, just to uh, forget about, you know, rigorousness of mathematics. We need to follow or we need to respect, you know, mathematics itself. You know, those kind of uh, point, if you are going to uh, disregard this kind of point of view, you may think of, you know, what is the goal of math education? Probably one of the goal, math education, is a logical reasoning rather than just memorization, right? Do you, agree, do you agree with this? I really hope you are going to agree upon you know, this point of view. Anyway, if the goal of math education is a logical reasoning rather than memorization, we need to think about you know, how to use you know, STEAM in mathematics curriculum in secondary school. So one of the reasons <coughs> why I show you these two video clips, you need to think about, you know, the school context is going to be, you know, changed in the near future. So if you're going to be a teacher, so contextual factors are going to be changed, right? So in 2014, for instance, 교과 교실제. What is the meaning of that? Just you know, the five years ago, I went to the you know, United States classroom. Basically, they are using you know, this system. So. 
you don't have to move around. So traditionally, you know, teacher need to move around to the classroom, right? But you know, if you're going to follow this rule, so you don't have to move around. You need to sit just you know in one classroom. Therefore, United States teachers, when I look at the, you know the U.S. classroom, teacher usually set up a lot of you know mathematic material around the you know classroom. There are you know, you know, different kind of you know bookshelf or a lot of stuff you know over there, and classroom setting already you know set it up. So before starting the class, teacher you know moving you know the some manipulative which he is going to use in that class. He or she is you know setting up before starting the class, and after you know you know, student coming to the class, you know directly. You know, teacher start you know the class based on the manipulative. That's why you know Ministry of Education is going to change you know classroom environment by using Kyoka Gyoshilje. Okay, I'm not sure what is the you know, English stand for for Kyoka Gyoshilje. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the important, right? I just try to keep with you. Do you understand what is the meaning of that? In addition to Kyokuha as you can see in the video clip, you know, Ministry of Education also emphasizes you know, STEAM, right? Basically, mathematics should be connected to other fields such as science, technology, engineering, and arts. Therefore, you need to prepare yourself before starting you know, your position as a teacher. Right? In the near future, the environment should be changed. <coughs> Otherwise, you are going to struggling. Right? Without enough preparation. Therefore, think about you know, storytelling and history math. That, that's the you know, first topic I addressed during the last you know, couple of weeks. Second topic, you know, storytelling and modeling. One of the teachers who is going to present in this class is going to talk about you know how to use mathematics in modeling. Okay. Today I'm going to introduce the you know, storytelling and scamp project. Uh, this project started in the United States. Basically, I'm going to briefly introduce what does it mean by SCAMP project. Okay? I'm going to explain step by step you know, this project. And then, uh, one of my students actually applied this project to you know, one high school. Uh, but I was very impressed, you know, by what student did by using this scamp project. Maybe you have never, you know, saw this kind. Uh, you, you have never seen, you know, this kind of, you know, probably activity in the mathematics classroom. But basically, next class I'm going to show you, you know, four different kind of project which is conducted by student based on the scamp project in Korea not United States. Okay? But uh, this project started in the United States. <clears throat> this is my point of view. I basically you know, believe you no know, communication approach to cognition. Communication approach to cognition means how students are developing their mathematical discourse. One of the important issues, students need to develop four different types of communication skills. <coughs> One is listening, obviously another is reading, communicating, uh, the other is communicating, and writing. Right? But do you think which one is the most difficult one? Which one do you think? Listening? Reading, communicating, writing. 
you think which one is the most difficult one in terms of communicating? <coughs> no idea. <laughs> Just guess what? <laughs> Based on my teaching experience, the most difficult one is writing. Uh, communicating is uh, you know, probably second in the difficult one, but uh, uh, based on my teaching experience, I think you know, writing is the most difficult one. Uh, just think about the sequence I developed. First, I use the video clip, right, for your listening. Just uh, for the couple of two weeks, right? The first two weeks, I use the video clip for your listening about what? History of math, right? And then, I use the reading skill, right? Because, you know, reading, from time to time, reading is more difficult, you know, compared to communicating. But, you know, without reading, you cannot communicate. Right? At some topic. Therefore, I focus on reading. So you read last week, right? History of calculus. And then what? You communicate each other, right? At the end, I'm going to ask you to write something. Okay? <coughs> but anyway, writing is one of the most important skills you need to develop or students need to develop. Therefore, but uh, writing is the, you know, the most difficult task from my point of view. That's why usually in my teaching, I usually developing, you know, I, I usually follow you know, this sequence, listening, reading, communicating, and finally writing. If you are going to write just one page summary, it's not that easy. Because you, know, you need to structuralize, you need to develop you know, your reasoning. Right? In your writing. Therefore, you know, I'm going to give you a three opportunity to write something. For instance, at the end of storytelling and creativity, I'm going to ask you to write, write your opinion about storytelling and creativity. And the second topic is manipulative. After finishing all the content, I'm going to ask you to write by your opinion about manipulative and creativity. What is the last topic we are going to cover? Do you remember? According to the syllabus? First topic is storytelling. Second topic is manipulative. What is the third topic? I explained right, in the first class. What is the third topic? Basically, representation by using technology. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to write your opinion about representation by using technology or any other you know, uh, uh, mathematical tools. Anyway, think about you know, these sequences. A scamp is basically a story about a cultural artifact from mathematical perspective. That's the initial. So that's why S, C, A, M, P. Therefore, scamp. They define the term, as I said, I always emphasizing you to operationalize your term, right? That's going to be important in math education. Otherwise, you cannot communicate, you know, correctly or efficiently with others. So they define cultural artifact. It is an item that has cultural significance to you. It could be a basket, carving, musical instrument, painting, picture, piece of law, statue, toy, food item, fruit, and so on. Just, you know, any item in real life context you can use. 
make sense what is the meaning of cultural artifact. But culturally, because some cultural artifact is important, for instance, in the United States, but the, those cultural artifact is important in Korea? Maybe not, right? For instance, pizza is an important food item in the United States because every day they're eating. Many students, as far as I know, at the lunch time, they are eating pizza. Why is that? Do you know why? Why they are eating, you know, McDonald or pizza? U.S. student. Because that is the cheapest food in the United States. Just five bucks or six bucks, they can buy a piece of pizza or one, you know, McDonald hamburger. If you have uh, more money, you can buy probably another food. But that's why many students are eating you know, pizza or hamburger during the lunch time. Anyway, so cultural artifacts should be respected depending on what? Culture, right? In Korea, do you think what is the important cultural artifact? Do you think? One is probably Taegukki, right? What else can you think of? I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you next class, but high school students develop cultural artifact. What kind of cultural artifact they develop, do you think? Right, kimchi. What else in Korea, cultural artifact? What about the Korea University? What can you think of? Makgeolli, <coughs> right? Actually, you know, one group, they developed in Makgeolli. So mathematical concept related to Makgeolli. Anyway, so that is the basically cultural artifacts. A lot of cultural artifacts you can think of, right? In our life. Maybe you may think of right now, you know, something related to cultural artifacts. Take a look at, for instance, par possible item. Uh, historical item in the paper, they suggest pyramid or Mayan calendar. Do you know what is a you know, sundial? In Korean, hesige. And a lot of, you know, uh, you know Item is possible. Spurt chart fake, for instance, in a baseball bat, you know, hockey park, or soccer pool, baseball, you know, billiard table, and skateboard. Game art fake, monopoly, you know, mahjong, and chess. And eatable item, as I said, you know, pizza and donuts, M&M, Coke, and pineapple. Do you know what is M&M, right? It's just chocolate, right? I think many girls like you know, men, 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 right? <laughs> Maybe boys may not. Also, you know, you can think of you know many others, you know, cultural artifact, you know, Russian doll, a face mask, or diamond, you know, firework, guitar, and nutcracker, something like that. But. Uh, Believe me, don't restrict you know, your just, you know, perception to students. <coughs> students, based on my experience, if you are going to provide an opportunity for students to develop their own idea, they are very creative. I'm going to show you next class how creative they are. Just, you know, think of any cultural artifact and think about mathematical concept we can use in that cultural artifact and you need to develop what kind of mathematical theory or property you are going to use in your presentation, they are going to develop. That is a totally different approach, right? Compared to traditional you know, class. But anyway, I'm going to introduce this kind of project you know, it can be used in the near future.
That's why I'm introducing in advance. Okay. Basically, our educational system is following U.S. system sometime, other time, you know, Japanese system. But uh, you know, there are many reasons we are following their you know you know structure or their sequences, <coughs> because you know some part of you know educational system in their country, it's going to be successful. That's why you know after looking at you know their result, we are following you know, their you know sequence or their structure. So because you know they developed education system you know you know far before the, in our system right in US for instance 16 I think what is the Harvard do you know <coughs> when is the founded Harvard University I think 1600 something I'm not sure you know, exactly but uh, anyway so our but education system started in you know, 1950 you know it's you know more than you know. 300 to 400 years ago. Therefore, you know, uh, don't you know to be you know pessimistic about you know using you know other country you know educational system or structure you know because uh, you know we can apply you know other system you know appropriately to our you know system right if it's gonna, if there are you know many advantages right. It's not, you know, bad approach from my perspective. Even Japanese, right? Japanese, the, if their you know, system is good enough, probably to, you know, oriental people, I think, you know, we can use, you know, th those kind of system, you know, appropriated in our system. Anyway, behind of So behind of this theory, this uh, this project, basically this question you know, should be addressed in advance. How to address diversity in class? This diversity is not only related to ethnicity. Think about you know just your idea. Both of you, right, address two different perspectives, right? That you want to be part of a diversity. You do have different point of view, right? But think about in the process of learning. Do you think every student have the same background? No, obviously, right? So every student have the same perspective on the topic which you are going to cover? No, right? That's going to be problematic in terms of communicating with your students. So. That's why, you know, this researcher asked first how to address diversity in class. How can you improve student engagement in your classroom, right? Because there are different kind of people, different kind of student, right, in your class. But if you're going to communicate one way directional communication, you can communicate with some of them, but not all of them. Do you agree with that? This is the conceptual framework. You can communicate with some student, but you cannot communicate with all student. That's going to be problematic in terms of diversity. Student diversity means a lot of issues going on. For instance, students from diverse backgrounds such as ethnicity, culture, gender, language, learning style, socioeconomic level, intellectual ability, and physical capability even. A lot of you know, different things is going on. Therefore, the project with the use of cultural artifact and creative story enables one to teach and access mathematics in an imaginative and creative way that both respect diversity and extend understanding to a personal context. So basically, you know, in this project, they try to understand each student contextual understanding as well as 
diverse background. So another you know, important issue you need to think about, you know, I'm going to show you two statements. Take a look at, for instance, uh, Devlin 2000, right? the year of 2000. You know, it was pointed out mathematics is not about number, but about life. It is about the world in which we live. It is about idea and far from being dull and sterile, as it is so often portrayed, it is full of creativity. How can we motivate our student by using this kind of fact instead of just memorization? Another thing, according to the NCTM 2000, the year of 2000, Equity does not mean that every student should receive identical instruction. Do you agree with that? Instead, it demands that reasonable and appropriate accommodation be made as needed to promote access and attainment for all students. Basically, depending on student, we need to adjust our instruction as a teacher. That's going to be equity, right? If you're going to just provide the same instruction to all students, that's not going to be equity. Make sense to you? That's going to be philosophy behind of the project. So what is the procedure? Actually, they used this procedure in the class. Take a look at it. Step one, just selecting a cultural artifact as a project. <clears throat> For instance, you can teach, even though in class, you can teach some of the content by yourself. However, you can you know, suggest some project in your class, right? As I did, right? At the end, what you're supposed to do as a group? You're working on some project, right? So related to storytelling and other topic. And step two, a detailed description of mathematics behind the artifact. Right? <coughs> Students themselves are going to select our own cultural artifact. And then they need to think about what kind of mathematics they're supposed to use behind the artifact. And then what? A mathematical problem based on your chosen artifact at a skill level appropriate to your class. Not advanced concept, right? Just appropriate to your class. And finally, imagine a story or song or poem that is centered on the artifact. If you're going to look at the, you know, this sequence first time, you may wonder, so what kind of mathematics is going on here? Is it possible to teach mathematics in class? Nonetheless, I'm going to explain you know, some of them actually we applied you know, in, the, in, in a high school. You know, next class, as I said. So anyway, this is the sequence. You need to think about you know scan project in a sequence. But one of you maybe ask me, so what kind what kind of you know scoring rubric you're supposed to use? But you know, even if it's difficult, for instance in terms of evaluating your group presentation, at first it's not that easy. But after spending you know, a couple of years, I'm going to develop you know, my rubric, which is objectified, not subjectified. Okay? Every student 
basically agree upon those kind of rubric you can develop after spending, you know, probably a few years. Take a look at, for instance, even though it's very small, but I want to show you all the content together. Basically, section 1, section 2, section 3, section 4, right? The specific question, you know, teacher asked and outline and presentation and effort and reflection. I'm definitely going to use, you know, some of these, you know, evaluations, you know, you know, skill in evaluating your group presentation. Obviously, preparation as well as effort and reflection, I'm going to, you know, use to evaluate your group presentation. Anyway, so excellent, good, satisfaction, unsatisfaction. Or just uh, you can use, you know, you know five, you know, four, three, two, something like that, right? In terms of evaluating, you know, group presentation or SCAMP project. And yet this is the, you know, uh, SCAMP project evaluation form. Total possible point is 40. Out of 40, you know, student can be evaluated by using this kind of, you know, rubric. For instance, here, excellent use of mathematics in the problem goes beyond the requirement is going to be, you know, excellent. However, adequate use of mathematics in the problem that's going to be good, but minimum use of mathematics in the problem that's going to be, you know, just a satisfaction. In other words, you know, mathematics, right, used in the cultural artifact is excellent. It's going to be A plus. Right? But uh, just adequate use of mathematics, that's going to be probably you know, B or you know, B minus. And the minimum, just, you know, just the minimum use of mathematics in that cultural artifact, probably just you know, a C or C minus, something like that. Right? Also, here, a thorough and well-documented description of mathematics behind the artifact, it's going to be A plus, right? Or A. Or adequate description of mathematics behind the artifact. You know, adequate means just, you know, appropriate. However, it's not enough, right? But who is going to be evaluated? Obviously, teacher, right? Need to evaluate. You need to develop your own, you know, evaluation system by using this kind of skill. But anyway, in terms of project, we still evaluate student project by using this kind of rubric. Not subjectively, but objectively, right? Probably example in Korea related to, you know, scan for project. <clears throat> You need to think about, you know, what kind, what else, you know, you know, the cultural artifact is possible. So as I said, you know, before, you know, we applied, you know, SCAMP project to, you know, a high school in Korea. So what kind of, you know, cultural artifact high school students are going to use, do you think? If you're going to be a teacher in a high school, if they're going to provide, pro provide you know, this kind of opportunity, you know, what kind of artifact they are going to develop, do you think? A lot of topics are possible. Also, you know, high school students are going to develop you know, you know, cultural artifact. By the way, so I'm going to explain you know, one more thing you know, before explaining you know, different kind of you know, uh, cultural artifact. Uh, so one of the theory in math education, you know, how the big question is how students learn mathematics. About you know this perspective, nowadays many math educators agree upon students need to doing mathematics. What does it mean by doing mathematics? 
if you're going to just do sitting and then just the listening, you cannot learn, you know, directly from those kind of listening. That's why, you know, many students in Korea nowadays, it's really difficult you know, for them to learn mathematics. Because, you know, just by listening, it's going to be difficult to learn mathematics. It's not, you know, university classroom, right? It's a middle school and high school classroom. Therefore, we need to emphasize in teaching mathematics, doing mathematics. But how can you handle doing mathematics? Basically, students need to participate in the classroom. But what kind of tool you are going to use? One of the best tool you can use, you know, you know project-based instruction, or by using some manipulative, or by using some technology. Student engagement can be improved, right? So we need to restructurize our instruction if you want to going you you are going to improve student engagement in your classroom, right? Otherwise, you know, just a one-way directional instruction. Make sense to you? That's why, you know, doing mathematics, you need to think about what is mean by doing mathematics. Why doing mathematics is so important. And anyway, that's going to be one important point you should think about. For instance, by using Taegukki, maybe binary notation and golden ratio and integration, students can develop, right? Have you ever thought about by using Taegukki you can develop this kind of mathematical concept? Bicycle probably cycloid, right? <coughs> Do you think uh, how student can develop by using Macaulay volume and integration? You just imagine by yourself. Because next time I'm going to show you the video clip. Student, high school student presentation. That's why I'm going to provide right now just a topic and mathematical concept which they are going to use in that topic. Just imagine yourself how they connected Macaulay with volume and integration. What about the pottery? Do you know what is the pottery? Actually pottery and kimchi they are going to use. Anyway, next time I'm going to show you this video clip. High school student develop, you know, based on you know this kind of you know by using this kind of topic, they develop in a mathematical concept. Any question? It's too boring. <laughs> It looks like. <coughs> so tomorrow as I said, we are going to watch you know, a video clip related to you know, this you know, student group projects. I'm going to show you what you can you know, improve your imagination, how creative they are. And next week, uh, <clears throat> we are going to invite uh, some high school and middle school teachers. Actually, they are teaching you know, mathematics in high school, you know, middle school. But anyway, so 
after having discussion about the storytelling and creativity, uh, we are going to have discussion about the storytelling and creativity. However, before having a discussion about storytelling and creativity, I'm going to you to write down just one page your opinion about storytelling creativity. And then I'm going to divide two different kind of group. One group, basically, you are going to agree upon using storytelling methods for creativity of mathematics. You need to develop your logical reasoning. Why you are going to agree upon using storytelling method in your teaching. But maybe some of you disagree. I'm not going to disagree with that storytelling cannot be used in teaching mathematics. Okay? I want to, you know, separately and half and half, if possible. But if not, but if there is, there is for instance, right now about the 41 students, but the 30 students agree upon using storytelling and uh, using mathematics uh, by using uh, storytelling method. But if there are only 10 students in you know, the other group, I'm going to join the, you know, just a small group of you know, group. Okay? And then you are going to debate. Okay? Discussion means you are going to, ha uh, you are going to have a you are going to use the in a debate discussion. Basically, one representative or one of your group are going to present. I'm thinking why, you know, we, we cannot use the you know, storytelling method in teaching mathematics. Um, but the, the other group, depending their opinion, okay, about that question. Anyway, that is the you know uh, debate discussion. You know, next to, I think. Uh, April 10th, exactly. Discussion about storytelling and creativity mean that is the one. And after finishing that discussion, I'm going to collect your one page opinion. Okay? That's going to be second your miscellaneous item. If you're not going to submit, I'm going to give you just a zero point. But if you're going to submit, I'm going after looking at the, your opinion, I'm going to grade. Okay, that's going to be a five point total in total. The history of math, history of calculus, that's going to be first miscellaneous item. Okay, I'm going to use out of five points. So second miscellaneous item, basically you need to write down your opinion, whether you agree or not about storytelling and creativity. Basically, storytelling even though I'm going to explain next time, but uh, I'm going to, you know, tell you in advance because you know you need to think about you know those kind of just one page summary. Do you understand? Any question regarding just one page summary? Just you need to write down your opinion, right? You have learned you know a lot of different kind of you know skill we can use, but uh, after looking at you know four video clip next class, I'm going to. More precisely, you know, write down, you know, what kind of, you know, you know, opinion you should write in one page summary. And then after finishing discussion class, I'm going to collect them all of, all of, from all of you. Any questions? So after having a discussion, we are going to invite, you know, three teachers actually. One teacher, Besu Young, she is going to present about the storytelling method in April 11th. And Ha Jung Mi, she's teacher, but she's talking about storytelling and STEAM. Okay, that's going to be April 17th. And Kim Young He, he's going to present about their club activity in their school. Okay, that's going to be sequence we are going to follow until uh, April 18th. And April 24th, 
We are going to start manipulative and creativity. We are going to shift from storytelling to manipulative. Okay, April, you know, twenty fourth. Any question? No more question. Because there is no question, we need to finish earlier. Impressed. Anyway, that's all for today.